Pfefferoni. I assume this is who we're looking at. Yeah, Pfefferoni. All right, humor. Uh, is this Scrims? Okay, so I assume this this must be Scrims. These compositions are way too good for ranked. Okay, so this is Masters main support. Uh, looks like we're playing a Moira, Moira Lucio rush comp. Basically, we'll, we'll give them some time to roll out once they swap their TPs, and we'll kind of look at the compositions. Okay, so Lucio's role in this composition is relatively simple. Now, simple and easy are two different definitions. It's very important that we understand the difference. Simple means that there aren't isn't a lot that you have to do. Easy means that it's easy to do. For example, my the, the metaphor that I always use is like making a sandwich. It's not simple. There's a lot of steps to make a sandwich. You gotta get the peanut butter, you gotta get jelly, you gotta get the bread, you gotta deep all the bread, you gotta make sure you get your plate, you gotta put the knife, and you gotta spread the uh, the peanut butter first, and then the jelly, not the other way around. They're gonna put the pieces together, they're gonna put the thing away. Like there's a lot of steps, but it's easy to do, right? It's not like those steps or any of those steps are hard or even that hard to remember. Now in your particular job, your job is simple, in other words, there's not a lot to do. Hey, thank you, congrats. There's not a lot to do, but what you do have to do is very important and it's very difficult. So, in Lucy and Brawl Comps has really two jobs, uh, three jobs. One is to, to, to speed when you engage, right? Not that hard. Number two is to deny enemy DPS, and basically not deny enemy threats, which those depend on the situation. And number three is to um, look for opportunities for you you yourself to make plays. Now, especially since the Reinhardt change, so the Reinhardt nerf, all right, or the Reinhardt buff, excuse me, to him being boop significantly less, it is less valuable for you to go for hyper-aggressive plays, at least depending on the situation. So generally it was like, you know, you speed boost in, you boop the enemy Reinhardt, and you can kill the enemy Reinhardt, but that's a little bit harder and a little bit less consistent to do now. So generally, your most important job is to speed your team in and on gauges and to deny enemy threats. Now, looking at the enemy team, it's pretty clear who you're going to be booping most of the time. Put in a windowed view. I, that, I don't know if I could actually pause it. We'll, we'll, we'll try it later. Um, it's pretty clear what your job is going to be most of the time. Number one, this is your first boop target. Now, there, if they were running Reaper, that would be your number one boop target to keep Reaper off because he's very easy to deny. Um, so you have to always look at like, okay, who can I actually affect significantly? And Reaper is obviously huge. Doomfist, a lot harder. A lot harder to consistently deal with. So Doomfist is not a priority target for you to deal with actually. Um, May is a priority because May is going to want to be holding Mouse 1 on your Rhine. You don't want to keep her out of freeze distance for as long as possible. Um, number two, you can boop enemy Brig away. Oftentimes, if, the brig, if they're initiating really hard and they get a really nice wall, let's say on your Rhine, you can get around the wall and boop the Brig away. Um, and then the last one would be like, you can, you can and should be looking for boops on enemy Rhine to boop him in further. Um, maybe you can boop Doom when he's trying to, uh, like if Doom will go in with a cycle, you can boop him once he's already in and screw up his escape uh, cooldown. So there's a lot of different things that you could do in here. Um, but like I said, the, the priority is going to be on denying May and like, are you screwing people up as much as you possibly can? Yes. People use always before jelly. Yeah, otherwise, like otherwise you get like jelly all in your peanut butter. Yeah, I mean like, it's not even like, oh, it, it, like this has nothing to do with taste. You, you put it on, it's the same stuff. It's just, it's just about like, you don't want to like trash your peanut butter, mate. Idiot. All right. Um, we're going to keep going. Let's, uh, let's actually get to the POV now. So we've discussed your role. Keep the enemy may away. Look to screw up the enemy threats. Speed your team and engage. You guys got a really nice roll up. I don't know if they just screwed up their TP or they didn't TP at all. They may have just not TP'd at all. Yeah, so they didn't TP. This is the difference of TPing and not TPing. They're also running a Brig. So you guys are going to get a ton of space. In terms of tempo, um, you could definitely argue that the enemy composition wants to play a little slower, but even then, this, they don't really want to play that much slower because they're running D.Va and you're running Zarya. So, like, the longer this fight goes, even though they're running Doom and you're running Reaper, so it's like, oh, their Doom will eventually get a pick. Um, yeah, but you have a Zarya. Um, that's not really good for the enemy team. Like, they don't really want to be playing it super slow either. So, in my opinion, I think your comp is just flat out better. Um, the enemy team's composition, like, is, like, a super, super fast tempo composition, but they're playing it with... 
a brig, not a Lucio. And they're like on a brig is not a good support lineup for their composition at all. Um, so like you guys just have the better comp. Big thing for you is you cannot get punched. There's, you should never be punched. So speed song right here is okay, but like as soon as you guys close the distance, you don't want to be in speed song anymore. There's the May wall. Okay, so let's see what we do here. This is fine. Good. Now what you would really like to do optimally is, no, we're gonna look at your Zarya here. Your Zarya is coming up on her next bubble. This is where you speed, and then when you're, uh, like you speed in, speed out, and then you swap the heals as soon as your bubble trades are out. Like you wanna be keeping them at a distance and like supporting your team when you don't have bubbles, and then when you do have bubbles, you wanna be initiating with speed. So it's like your speed on your engage, then speed back out, and then boop the enemy teams away. But that more has to do with your boop than it has to do with your speed. Like you use your boop aggressively when you have bubble, you use your boop defensively when you don't. Fine. Odd bubble. But like, even this right here, like if you look at this right here, you're like, oh, I see Ana. Not really your job. Now you could go for this in devolved fights, but it's just not, it's not like, unless you're confident in your mechanics to like immediately get this kill, your your return on impact here is like so bad. Cause like, look at what happens here. You're like, look at Ana, look at Ana, look at Ana. And look at what you could have been doing here. Ryan comes in for a pin. You could have booped this. You could have screwed up this boop or even booped him in further instead of wasting time over here. So like, to me, I look at this and I'm like, okay, this has the potential to work out, but this is the low percentage play, right? This is the low percentage play and you don't need to end up even committing to it, right? So what, what, what do you actually do? You do absolutely nothing here. Like, boop the Ryan here, mate. Like that Ryan misses the pin if he's booped. Somehow they have way more suits than they should. Speed, 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 speed. Yeah, okay, again, again, you have to ask yourself, what am I doing? What am I using my boot for, right? So like right now, wh why? Why do you boop that? What does that accomplish? It's meaningless ship damage. You don't use your cooldowns for meaningless ship damage unless you have literally nothing else to do with it. So like right here, you're coalescing in and you're bubbling. Why aren't you going forward to knock these guys in? What are you doing? Why are you spending time shooting and booping a doofus? Like, fine, if you want to shoot the doofus, but definitely don't boop. And again, the priority here needs to be on punishing the tank line. Again, this is not really your responsibility. This is really hard for you to deal with. This is beeping is obnoxious. I really wish they'd fix this in replay. But this is, you're going in, you're calling, you're bubbling, you're speeding, but then you start to stop the shoot of Doomfist instead of enabling your team to go in harder. Like booping that Ryan in, booping the Brig in, booping the May in. Any one of those options would have been fine. This is the worst thing that you could be doing in this circumstance right now. Incredibly low impact. Sit down! That's what you get. So if we go back and look at this fight, and I'm just gonna turn off, I'm gonna turn off audio, and we're gonna look at this from a third person perspective, because a lot of the times, it's very difficult, it's, it's difficult, or it's easy rather to lose focus on what's actually what's actually happening, right? It's it's easy to lose focus from a first person perspective. Okay, so you initiate here, you get a little boop there. This is probably fine. I probably would have preferred you to boop the Ryan in because you guys are initiating with bubble, um, but whatever, okay? So you're like on the right stuff-ish here at least, okay? You kill the Doom, he's off, he's off tempo here, fine. Good, that was a good engage. Fine, fine, fine. Here comes the next bubble. Where are you? Here comes the bubble, bang. Booping them away, I don't like that. You're booping them away when you want them to be closer when you're bubbling. You spend time on Ana. This allows their enemy Ryan to pin your Ryan. And then the worst defender of them all is when you do coalescence and you're initiating with bubble, you're literally turning around to shoot a Doomfist. To literally do what? 30 damage, 40 damage to a Doomfist? 
So like the problem here is the return on investment, okay? It's not that this is completely worthless. The fact is, is that you could be doing something better, right? That's not the, 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 like obviously this is, I guess, minorly useful, okay? But this is, okay, Inspire is going to tick once and this damage is healed up. And you're not inconveniencing him because if we look at what the Doom has, he just used his punch. Haven't been able to hey! put him back. Welcome back, mate. Yeah, how'd the move go? Um, good to see you, mate. So yeah, right like right now, you guys are again going aggressively with Cole with Bubble. W are you marking the May? No. Are you booping the Rhine in? No. Are you booping the Brig in? No. Are you even booping the May in? No. Your May is getting frozen right now. This is something that you could have a huge impact on. If you boop this May right here. Your May survives ice blocks and maybe you win the fight. Do you see this? And what are you doing right now? You're out of the fight. You're just now getting in to melee distance. So, in this current compositional setup, there's no reason for you to be screwing around with stuff off in the flanks and things like that most of the time. Now, you're going to notice something else, chat. Chat, what was the other DPS that was really popular in Brawl compositions? Do you guys remember? What was, what was the other DPS comp, uh, hero that was really popular in Brawl for a long time? Good man, thanks much better than right now. Nice, glad to hear me. Yeah, Kree, okay? Now, what was the danger with what I'm telling um, Ferroni? I'm telling Ferroni to play way more aggressive, like, you know, deny maze, boop runs in. Why did you not, why did Overwatch League Lucius not do this a lot with Kree? Yeah, flashbang, right. So the like it was it was actually hilarious. Like he would watch a funny astro VOD, and funny even even funny astro would play very passively. Very passively, shooting like shooting shields and speeding his career around a little bit, you know, amping heals, you know, just basically like AFK and just moving his team around, right? Very patient. But again, there's no flashbang here. There's no flashbang. You've got you got your Reaper, or you've got Doom, or you've got May, or you've got Break. Like, there's no flashbang here. You don't need to. Re there's no hit scan for you to respect. You need to be enabling your front line and disabling the enemy front line, the May, the Brig, etc. And instead, you, what you've done is you've looked at an Ana, you've looked at a Doomfist, and neither one of those have provided any value whatsoever. And yeah, I mean you're getting lapped in ult charge just about. So, not good, not good. Again, it's not like you're you're feeding or making a ton of mistakes. You're just not doing your job. Okay, okay, it is a mistake. You're not doing your job. You're not feeding, but you're not doing your job. And so you might as well be on like Zen or Brig here. It doesn't matter if it's a brawl comp if you're not going to actually play Lucio in a brawl style. Okay. Okay. So again. Boop them. You can initiate with bubbles. Boop them in. And then when you don't have bubbles, boop them away. You don't even have to get the timing perfectly right. Just look for these guys. Like this right here is your trifecta of heroes that you want to be dealing with or harassing. All right. There's your trifecta right there. You need to have a set list in your mind of heroes that I can deal with. I guarantee you, you know about Reaper, but you need to add these guys to the list too. Speeder, speeder. That's good. That's good. That right there, okay, chat, I want you to answer this question, okay? Now, you're prob you're not in a great position to win this fight because they're using Rally, and Rally is oppressively strong. But right now, chat, what did that boop just open up? Doom or Reaper. Maze out of freeze range, okay? So what does that mean? More space for Ryan, okay? So what does that mean? Yeah, Ryan can swing. Ryan can swing. Ryan swings to get more space. You boot back bay again, you get more space, more space, more space, more space. You DPS pop off, easy win. There you go. You boop the May back. Now your Ryan can swing. So let's see if your Ryan actually does swing. He... I don't know why he shattered that, but... I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, do you look how much space you just created for your team? Like, you boop the May back. May is split off. May doesn't actually do anything until now. Now let's see, where are you? How did you get back here? Let's check this out. Hello? Stop! 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 
you are you are in this peel mindset, right? And I can appreciate that. Um, but I, the, the the problem is, is you have to look at your composition. Faroni, who are you peeling for? Now, if you're running an Ana and you want to fall back and give your Ana some eel song and maybe threaten the Doomfist a little bit, fine. Who are you peeling for? I mean, Doom is just a standard brawl hero, so it's probably just them playing with their strengths. You're playing Moira, brother. In fact, the person that's probably most at risk to the Doomfist is Zarya, who's on your front line, not your back line. So the irony is that you were pe trying to like peel for this Doom, and by thinking about peeling for Doom, you're actually doing a worse job at peeling for Doom. Because the best thing you could do for, for your team to survive Doom is to screw over these tanks so that they don't have to worry about anybody else but Doom. If you boop the, the May away, May is no longer a threat. You got your team can deal with Doom. Yeah. So this is poor. This is real poor. Like you you are like look at look at this right now. Chat, do you what's what do you see right here, chat? What are, what are the opportunities that we see? I, I'm good. This is driving me nuts. What what do you guys see here? Opportunity. This is actually a perfect image of Lucio value, okay? There's probably four or five different things that our Lucio could do here. What could Lucio do here? There's at least four things that I can see that Lucio could be doing right now. Maybe five. Br uh, boop Ryan. Yes, Ryan is pinning. Boop him in further. Screw up his pin. I love <laughs> Hey, Cody. 14 months. Nice. Boop May away. Yeah, May. May oh, whoop, we, we missed it there. May is in deep. She's freezing. Okay, boop her away. Give your Ryan more space. Like, boop that, that, boop that May. And when you boop... Oh, oh, no. I messed up. What happened? Oops, I messed up. I messed up. Give me a second check. I don't even know where we're at. Okay, so yes, boop may away. Not only would she be, you know, not fro freezing, she'd be out of the fight for two seconds. She wouldn't be doing any damage. So it'd be like a 5v6 for a brief couple of seconds. Um, boop Ana behind wall. Yeah, you could duel Ana. You could boop Ana away. You could boop Ana in. Um, you could also, like you said, boop Brig in further, make it easier to go. So there's like, there's literally four or five different things that you can do on the front line right now. No. Right now. I mean, the best way to improve, if you, if you don't have the option of joining a team, or you don't have the time, or you, you can't find a team, then yes, ranked is the best way to play. Ranked is the best in-game way of improving aside from scrimmages with a team. Yes. That along the self-bod review once or twice a week. But yeah, so like you're busy shooting Doom Nefis now, and yeah, you get the kill, but Doom would probably die anyway. And you are passing up on immense value. Okay? May actually gets a fat blizzard. This was something that you could have denied. Ana is half HP. This is somebody that you could have killed. Where, where, where even are you right now? Where are you? Uh, I really like you since the fall. Yeah, you're over here. You could have booped the D.Va away earlier to maybe save your Zarya or make the D.Va spend more time on it. Um, and all of this is because that you are dealing with the Doom, Jacob 3-0, uh, things for the fall. You're spending way too much thinking about backline and not enough time thinking about frontline. And the, when there's no CC, there's no hit scan threat, you are you win frontline duels with your team. Boops denying the team. Jet, uh, jet and jet thinks the fall. So really poorly played. Now in ranked, obviously this raw brawl versus brawl matchup is not going to happen a lot. However, if you're scrimming, um, I ain't fat pingu thinks the fall. Any weird name like that, I'm hesitant to read because I've been baited a couple times before. Fahad TMC thinks it's all. Okay, um, but yeah, really, really, really poor. Like, you're playing Brawl versus Brawl. You're on a team. You should know better than this. There's no McCree in the table. There's no excuse for this. Bullet and I think it's fall. Okay, so let's, uh, let's head back to what we're doing here. 
Let's um, scoot back a little bit because there's like about 10 seconds of gameplay we missed out on. This fight's basically lost. Um, your, your, your maze out of it. They do commit bomb for whatever reason, so that's good. You did waste your Moira ult, so that kind of sucks. Um, we could turn back audio briefly. I'm just tired of the eternal beeping. So really important to note here that really you should not be using your beat to counter anything at this point. Like you have a free beat now. Blizzard's been used, bomb has been used, Doom has old has been used, um, and even nano has been used. So every there's like a million ults that you could have countered are now completely off the table. So yes, shatter is on the table, but beat doesn't consistently counter shatter and obviously shatter is not the most consistent ultimate either so what i would be doing if i were you is be saying guys i want to go in really aggressively with my beat like let your team engage really hard obviously your rhine has to watch their rhine and then beat once you guys are on top of them don't beat too engaged and beat once you already have engaged um uh if he booped the May out, would it be smart to speed the Rhine so he could get quick out quick? I mean, I don't think the Rhine wanted to get out there at all. The Rhine didn't want to get out there at all. The Rhine was keep going. Like, you had a lot of space. You were a couple of men up. Just keep going. Booping the May would have allowed your Rhine to keep going, uh, as well as screwing up your mail. Is joining a team worth it? Is that sort of player at the point is just focusing on? Um, I think it, it depends on how much effort you have to put in. If you find a, a team with relatively low effort and you're able to scrim a couple times a week, then yeah, sure. I don't care if it's bronze or silver. Totally worth. The problem is, is that um, they're difficult to find um, consistent with any like any sort of consistency on teams below diamond. Um, and then you know if you have to spend like hours upon hours upon hours every week trying to find a team or getting a team together then yeah it'd just be better to play ranked but if you can get one with relatively low effort then obviously scrims even at diamond or platinum level are better than ranked okay so i want you to engage with b don't really know why you amp there this amp you should be not you should be amping as you engage this is just you guys walking forward this is you want to amp so that your amp the end of your amp is when you guys are on top of the enemy team um and on, uh, technically, the best amp is when you're amping already on top of them. You start your amp once you're on top of them, but obviously that might take a little bit long, too long of time. Like you're amping here as if you have to like, all right, guys, hurry, hurry, chase them down, we're fighting. But they're just backing up. You could just press W here. Amp w w when the shields touch. Amp when the shields touch, or right before the shields touch. Or, or okay. Like, literally, get, again, third-person perspective here is really important. You can get a good, good idea here. Right here, these guys are backing up, right? You guys could just sit on speed song right now and we'll press W, right? Now you want to you want to be amping. Now you can amp speed, go into a beat, and rush this May or rush this brick. This is these are your options here, okay? Again, a lot of emphasis on Doom. You can't help that. You can help frontline. Because if we look at what actually forces your Ryan to be in a position to where he gets punched, why is your Ryan getting punched, right? Is it the Doomfist or is it something else? Take your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let's see where, where Ferroni is, okay? Ferroni does a good job here. It is the Reinhardt that starts to clear in and swing. And if you were on top of your Reinhardt like you should be, you could have potentially booped the Doomfist here too. So I'm not saying ignore the Doomfist, just focus frontline. Focus front line, and this kind of stuff doesn't happen. And again, what... I mean, that's cool and all, but you're down one. So, like, yeah, you could potentially win this fight still, but you're down one. So you're significantly less likely to win this fight than if you'd just gone in with beat in 6v6. And said, hey, Ryan, they got Shatter. I'm going to beat. Watch Shatter. We still win. We'll win the fight as long as we block Shatter. So now your beat is just kind of being kited. Frontline, 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 help your Reaper, help your Zarya, help your Reaper, help your Zarya. Definitely worth doing that in devolved fights. Even if you don't get the kill, you're basically denying her any capability to heal, and she'll also be screaming for help, so, yeah. Also should be shooting this choke here. Beat takes forever to build. You should not be sitting on speed song here. Okay, so that is another thing too. Um, you're way too much uh, speed song in non-engagement situations. Like you should be squeezing every little bit of beat charge that you could possibly can. Um, 
you know, don't worry about stealing it from your Moira. Your Moira will build coal like on every other fight or every fight anyway. Like, just you need the beat charge. You need, need, need the beat charge. The difference in this fight could be I get two beats in a, in a round or I get one beat in a round. And a lot of times it'll be like 75% on beat when the, the round's over. You don't want that to happen. Why are scrims better than rank on the communication? I mean, you just get to like actually learn how the like you get to actually practice with the same group of people again and again and again. And like you get to focus on like just your gameplay and like obviously there's the variables of having a you know a person who's tilted or throwing or you know picking off meta and like everybody gets to kind of think about it and discuss their role and, you know it's the same thing like why a pug of you know soccer or basketball would be inferior than making a team um even if your team sucks like there's some sort of synergy that you build and you kind of get to practice the team experience wait brig is excellently balanced right now She's, I don't understand how she has a low pick rate below master. She's really strong. Not really strong. She's she's very strong. Not crazy strong. People, the problem with Brig is people haven't figured out, how, still haven't figured out how she, that she plays differently now. She's not really a brawl hero. She's, she's a semi, she's like a, she's like closer to Mercy than she is to, to like, uh, to which the old Brig was. Like she is a deep, she pockets DPS and she, she brawls when she has an advantage. When did you use Amp here? Very interested in how you used Amp here. Kind of a panic Amp. Not really necessary. It Thankfully, the tail end of your Amp did catch the uh, start of the Blizzard there, but yeah, not a, not a great Amp. Not really. Boop! Yes! Sweet mercy! Do you see how valuable that one cooldown was i'm um, listening to me lucio players your boop is way more flexible and valuable than just an environmental kill tool look at this look at this brig nano may rhine bang look at that look at this Look at that. Hey, Black Tricron. Beautiful boop. This is an excellent boop. This is this right here is a fight winning boop. Doesn't look fancy, but very well done. Hang on, I can actually do the VOD command because oh no, back in there I did. Sweet. May nanoing May is pretty bad. <laughs> She's very immobile, and she doesn't have much range, so nanoing May is not great. Again, see the sp see the speed song. Why are you in speed song here? You could you can reactively speed song. Like you can you'll either hear like see them pushing up, and you could push in, or like like one, being a tenth of a second late with speed song isn't ever going to have an impact. But not having like your your Moira having to exhaust extra resource because you're not in heal song. Like, let's check your Moira's resource. Yeah, so she's on half resource right now. And she's literally doing 75, 80% of the healing because you're on speed song half time. Like, you have gained 12% ult charge in the past 20 seconds. That's not good. Yeah, thank you, Baggins, sir. Yeah, definitely a weird nano for sure. Good, it's good amp. Good recognition. This is definitely one of the situations where I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you not on this wall booping them in? Why? What are you doing? Like, It feels like you're constantly waiting for Doomfist to engage, but the irony is, is by playing so passively, as we said, you're literally just giving the Doomfist opportunities. Like right now, if I'm the Doomfist, I'm targeting you. I'm, you're the only really consistent target that I can punch. You know? Get up on the wall, brother. Go in. Go in. Holy moly. All right. Again, speed song. Speed, 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 speed. There has been an entire fight, or three quarters of a fight, I guess, considering the staggers and stuff. And you have built 20% ult charge. You may never build another beat the rest of this round. Why are you not on heals? What are you? You're literally standing still, and you're still on speed. Um, yeah, you can, Seth. Yeah, you can wall right up here. Yeah. 
This is this is not a terrible. You can wall ride around here. This is this is a really bad spot for you guys. That was a bad wall. And now you guys are calling the kite back. So just the general knowledge, and I'll say this for you because you guys are scrimming and I don't know how many of your teammates are watching this, but you really never want to kite back here. You either fight here or you fight here. If you screw up your wall, but they use their wall too, you should be fighting this location. You should be coalescing and matching them right here. This kite back stage is really dangerous for you. I mean, you can see it right here with the Saria. This is really, really dangerous, right? I remember watching way back in the day when I first got to coaching Coach Arrow over at Dallas Fuel calling this the no-no zone, right? It's the no-no zone, chat. This is not a this is not a kite path that you want to take. You're gonna get the point. You're gonna have no cooldowns. It's gonna be half HP, and then you're gonna try and stabilize. Either you fight in a point, which is great, or you can fight up here, which is fine. One or the other. You don't kite back. You commit. You commit your ultimate here. If you screw up something, it's fine. Just commit your call. Okay. <clears throat> still not in. You're still on speed. Look at you. You look at your critical Zarya, and you're still on. You're still on speed. Your Mario already has coal. She doesn't need healing. You still are on speed. You're still on speed. Wow, okay. This is good, by the way. It's a nice little boot. It's annoying. It, it prevents him from getting the swing. He's very late on the pin. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the big thing here is just that you don't have beat. Like, there's, you don't have beat. Yeah, your wall was Ben. Speed bot, pretty much. So if you go for a hold at the front, you should stay at the front and not back up the point. Yes, the only reason that you back up the point is that they send somebody all the way around to apply point pressure. And even then, what you prefer to do is if they send like a tracer or something to point, you prefer to send your Lucio back to point to just stall and, you know, 1v1 the tracer and you take the 5v5 here. Um, because Lucio, he doesn't even have to get the kill. He can just waste, um, and like, it's very difficult for anything that goes all the way to the back of point to be able to win a 1v1 of the Lucio after like 15, 20 seconds. Like his Lucio could stall forever. So you just send your Lucio back here. You don't need speed anyway, because you're taking the fight here. And then your Lucio just keeps him busy and stalls the point. Um, so very, very rarely do you kite back. Um, I mean, you can kite back if they're just like exiting the spawn, obviously, but if they're pushing the choke, you can't, it's very dangerous to kite back. I mean, I didn't think your May was bad. I, I thought your May was okay. Maybe Seth, yeah. Sniper OP 2.0, thanks for the ball. Yeah. I'm not still in academy mode. Heck no. Okay, so I'm, I'm like, the, you guys forget that like, I, I generally am nicer on first time VOD reviews. Generally. Generally. Okay. Um, basically, there's a couple things with your Lucio. The two biggest things that I would look at, like a biggest return on your investment um, is number one, your like you needed to be enabling your front line a lot more in brawl comps like deny the enemy brawl enable your brawl especially when there's no hit scan on the table like there's nothing like you're running a moira you've got nothing to, to peel for so i want you to go into these brawl matchups and go like okay do i have a backline to peel for number one and number two is there anything that's going to prevent me from Reddit Lucioing? And if the answer is not really no, then you need to be Reddit Lucioing. Not even like Reddit Lucioing, like killing backline, but enable your frontline, then disable yours. Enable yours, disable yours. Enable yours, disable yours. Enable, disable, enable, disable. Okay? And the second thing, and this is a huge one, way too darn much speed song. Way too much speed song. Like you use your speed when you want to move back or you want to move forward. If you're not moving, you're always in heal song. It's a huge, like, like that's the bad part of Reddit Lucio is Reddit, the root Lucio is to just sit permanently on speed. You need to use speed when, you, when you're when you moving. And you did a good job of that, but then you just sat on speed. 
and you missed out you would have easily have built a beat by the, that round the second beat by the end of that round that would have saved you during the nano doom and would have won the run um i'm gonna have fun with this one. Oh crud yeah brig plays mediocre across the board there are a lot of overwatch league brigs that are still mediocre she's a very difficult hero to play right now Okay. This is uh Ferroni and Chet. Ferroni or W. Okay. Okay. So Ferroni or anybody else in chat, do you want to describe what why you play what is Briggs' job in this composition? Brig has are three jobs. Big the most important jobs. Obviously there's many, many, many jobs. But you have three jobs basically. Three jobs. Pack. Your DPS. Blue Punisher 52 thinks the fall. Yep. You pack your DPS, number one. What are the other two jobs? Anti die for Zinyana. Yep. You protect your Zinyana. You pack your DPS. What's the third job? Nope. Nobody said it. Yep. Prevent dive. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's protecting your Zen. Permapack Echo. No. I'd generally prefer Tracer over Echo if you had both. Uh, Echo is a good pack target, but I think Tracer is better. Proc Inspire. Yep. Proc Inspire. So pack your DPS, generally your Tracer, but depends on like which DPS is going in. Pack your DPS, protect your Zen, Proc Inspire. Now, Proc Inspire is always a priority for a Brig. Um, sometimes it's less of a priority, sometimes it's more of a priority. So like if, let's say if you were playing um, like Brig in a, in a, um, in a brawl comp or like a spam comp or something like that, a spam comp versus brawl, you wouldn't want to Proc Inspire as much because you'd have to be, respect the brawl. But like, in this comp, proccing inspire is a little bit more of a priority. And why is that, chat? <clears throat> why is proccing inspire a, a priority? Low heels, yep. And this is a really good support lineup, but it has to be run properly. If you don't run it properly, you're going to have a hard time. This is an excellent composition, by the way. Your composition is way better than theirs. Um, but you have to you have to run it properly. And if you don't run it properly, you're going to struggle. So you guys need to really take this engagement quickly. Um, Z Tracer Echo doesn't always have to play quickly. Like if you face a Brawl comp, you'd play slower. Um, but they're playing like heavy spam. And you guys want to play this quickly. So you want to proc your Inspire as quick as possible. You want to assassinate the Echo, uh, the Ana, the, one of the tanks. Like you can kill tanks stupid fast. Like you guys are so much better at killing tanks than they are. I don't care if they have Ana heals. It doesn't matter. You have Discord and you have um, Echo, Echo Tracer. Like you can murder their monkey, L like absolutely annihilate their monkey and Diva before they can do anything. Um, you also can kill their Ana before they they should be able to kill your Zen because uh, armor pack versus Mercy Beam armor pack is just better. Um, so you want this fight to go relatively fast. Farah's spam isn't amazing into dive, but it, it will add up the longer the fight goes. Um, and they don't run out of healing. You guys kind of do, depending on how much Inspire do. So, you generally play slow with this comp, but against this comp that has heavier spam, you do want to kind of play fast. So your job again, proc inspire, protect your Zen in case they dive, and then you need to um, uh, keep your deep tracer packed. Because like tracer, like chat, what does tracer have to worry about here? There's literally nothing that tracer that there's in echo as well. Tracer and echo have zero, nothing to worry about, nothing. The enemy echo is obviously something you have to keep an eye on, but like tracer especially has nothing to worry about. Ana versus Zen in this lineup. I mean, Ana is just more sustained. Ana is just easier, and Ana is also um, Ana sometimes is easier versus like think of it this way. Ana gives you more win conditions that are a little bit easier to execute because you just have higher sustain. Um, but in the raw dive versus dive, um, if you're confident that you're playing into dive matchup, then Zen is going to be better. Whipshot, yeah, Whipshot is mostly for proc and inspire, yeah. Does Brig build more ult charge from inspire or pack killing? Um, generally from inspire, but Brig doesn't really get crazy inspire healing until devolve fight. So like, think about this way. Tracer is an actually really, really good cleanup here. She builds a lot of ult charge in cleanup stage. Like, the, like it's the first pick happens, and then Tracer like snowballs it really well. Same kind of thing with Brig. Brig won't get a lot of ult charge, won't get a lot of ult charge, won't get a lot of ult charge. Some, if somebody gets a pick, you guys execute your plan. Brig finally can go in and she her just 
ins- her 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 uh, inspire like st- her rally like uh, or inspires just me like crazy jacks up her heels. So just be, you need to be patient and then you need to be decisive when you do go in. Yeah, armor pack heals not a lot here. So let's uh let's uh look at your POV. Good. So, yeah, you you need to be going in here. Okay, let me look at this setup from you guys. This didn't seem awful. Your diva is taking way too much damage. Your diva should be like playing a little bit more passively. Like, there's no reason for your diva to be peaking this. Your your Winston is full HP, and your Winston isn't going in. Your diva literally just feeds like 500 ult charge for for free. Um, so this is your diva feeds hardcore here. There's also really no reason for your Zen to be sitting on bridge as well. Your your Zen should be all the way across here, especially with a threat of concussive blast. Um, there's no reason for that. Okay. Um, yeah, and this is a mistake from your monkey too. So your monkey gets slept and booped off the map, but your monkey should not be diving, Anna. Like, again, if we, we, we stop here, like, what are the what advantage do you guys have over this composition? Think. What like obviously technically I feel like their Ana's probably gonna be a little easier to kill than your Zen, but you guys have more of an advantage over that. Raw damage. So why are you going for the squishies? Kill the tanks, boys. You guys have an echo tracer with Discord. Kill the tanks. This monkey cannot be healed up. He will not. If your tracer, where is your tracer? Your tracer should be on, um, where the heck is your tracer? Your tracer should already be on point. Yeah, your tracer's going backline. <laughs> what? 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 Oh, and they're worrying that this is the worst tracer skin as well. Look, look at this. Who thought this was a good idea? What? What is this? This is awful. Um, anyway, your tracer should be on point. You should have discorded this monkey, and your tracer should just sit here and blow up the monkey. You should have armor packed the tracer. Yeah. tracer legs. yeah. You haven't, as of now, you've not packed any of your DPS. You've packed your monkey. Wait, where's your other pack? Where the heck is your other pack? Why do you only have one pack? This is autopilot, ladies and gentlemen. This is autopilot. Okay? This is autopilot, okay? This is, oh, I armor pack Zen, he no get dove, GG. But you need to stop and ask yourself, chat, why is this a bad move? Think about it. Look at look at look at your uh, look at your armor packs right now. What's a pro what's the problem right now? What's up? Look at look at your cooldowns. Look, no armor packs. You can't pre-pack your Zen. You don't need to pre-pack your Zen. I mean, maybe you pre-pack your Zen if you're expecting an EMP, right? But like. Is your Zen un in any danger at all right now? No. What's going to happen? They're going to die of your Zen. You'll be able to pack him. 
proc inspire and whip shot anybody that gets close to him. Zen is fine. Zen is Zen is Zen doesn't even need to be pre-packed in this comp. Zen is totally fine. Right now, your pack is needed on one of two things. You either, I guess you could pack your Diva, which would be kind of useful. You could pack your Echo, which would allow your Echo to go in super aggro. Or if we're running this composition properly, you pack your Tracer, who would be going in hard on their deep tanks right now. Look at this. Imagine if this monkey was discorded and you had a packed Tracer shooting him. Well, obviously I know why he packs in, but you don't need to worry about that. Look at my, look, look look at this. Their monkeys committed cooldowns. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look 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 look. They are hard peeling. Thanks for the gifted sub mate. They're hard peeling. What value is your Zen getting out of this armor? And the answer is not, oh well, he's just not Jonak, so it's not worth it. I don't care if your Zen is Jonak. Why are you armor packing him? He's under no pressure at all. He's not going to be under any pressure. And if he is, you can reactively pack him, and he will be fine. He's okay. He's not going to die instantly. You'll get value out of the heal plus the overheal. You're okay. Look at this. Can you imagine a pack on a Tracer or your Diva here? Like, it'd be instantly more valuable. So, like, I'm glad that you proc your Inspire here. Nice work. Um, I mean, the, the real fundamental issue is your team is not running the comp right at all. Your team needs to be blown in, in the dive mirror. I don't care if, like, you blow up tanks. You blow up tanks. The only time that you go for backline is if they were running, like, Zenyatta, Ash, Echo, or something like, or Bap Zen, or something super greedy like that. You have an immense amount of damage. So, yeah. Good, uh, good shield bash. Again, you guys just go in and in and in and in. Okay. Pack, 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 pack your Echo, pack your Echo, pack your Echo, pack your Echo, pack your Echo. Oh, that sucks. Please pack your Echo. Thank you. Do not pack your Zen. Zero reason for you to be taking a rocket like that, too. Sloppy. Careful, careful, careful. Good. Keep your distance. Okay, you really have to respect the fire rockets. You cannot be taking... Like, this right here is a tremendous waste. Harmony Orb, that's going to go on you. Very wasteful. No damage taken. Man, how does your deep how does your echo just die? Oh uh, yeah, she's just not getting help. Yeah. You are spending a lot of time not looking at your DPS. Like right now, your echo should be packed. Your echo should be packed or your tracer should be packed. If you can't see your tracer, you pack your echo. Right? Your echo should be packed. Your pack echo definitely feeds, but yeah. I would also say that I don't like your positioning either. I would like you and your Zen to be tucked in here or tucked in here. Like, how are they going to get you in here? Very safe. By the way, did you notice something, chat? You are not... You failed to armor pack your Zen, right? He, But does it matter? Your Zen is totally fine. Do you see, you see this? Do you see how little danger your Zen is? Zen is in? This is where you need to... Well, you, you should have armor packed that. That that was a that was a that was a oh yeah yikes for sure. Let's see this engagement here. There's you need to hit the whip shot. Oh, that that needs to be hit. Unfortunate. How often should one be holding onto pack versus using it? I generally always like to have at least one pack available before a fight starts. Once a brawl and a fight's going in and fight's going on, you don't really need to hold back. Generally, most of the time. Okay, good proc. Mm. Tracer is packed. You pack a duplicated Winston. Huh. And they go Widow against your comp? Interesting. Not the best choice. Okay. 
So good inspire proc, huge wasted armor pack on your echo. Uh, but you did prioritize it getting your tracer back, so that's good. Yeah, Widow is terrible against this comp. You have pocketed Tracer and you're running Widow on Cough. Well, now you just win the game. Or you feed. <laughs> I spoke too soon, chat! Uh-oh! Let's see what happens here. Bomb isolates. You are spending a lot of time hard split from your Zen. So even just you being, like, here instead of up here would have been like the difference in the world because you can get harmony orb from here you can los stuff from here you're playing a little too aggressively forward when you when you, when you don't need to like right now the priority doesn't need to be on procking inspired and playing up to choke this bridge out the priority needs to be keeping yourself alive and then just worry about peeling for your zen like you have rally you're fine this is bro bomb uh shield broke to bomb that is true yeah but that's a huge huge error um, too far, a little too far from your Zen. You don't want to be on top. You don't really need to be on top of your Zen, but you want to be within like an arm's distance, like this from here to your Zen is fine, and then just being too far forward. You guys should still win this. You guys just have a much better composition than they do. Their comp just honestly kind of sucks. Again, just clear point. You've got CC. Like, clear point. CC is really useful in preventing stalling. Not a whole lot to see here. Okay. Alright. Not terrible Brig gameplay, but not very good. So, for your Brig specifically, um... Put more priority in pocketing your Tracer. If you don't have a Tracer, pocket your Echo. If you don't have an Echo, you could pocket your Ash or Sombra or Kree or whatever. But, like, you need to have whatever DPS that can consistently count on being pocketed by you. Uh, and then the second thing would be you need to uh, don't pre-pack your Zen. Unless you're literally, like, expecting EMP or they're literally staging a really hard dive, like, with Sombra Trace and Moira Lucy or something like that. Don't pre-pack your Zen. You can always reactively pack, peel, whatever. Um... Some positional issues as well. A little bit too aggressive with your positioning. I like you being split from your Zen by a little bit. Uh, and I do like you going up to put proc and spire, but then you go back and you take a more conservative position here. Um, you're not running full brawl. You are running some form of spam slash dive. So, okay. Do you have any questions? Like within shield best distance from Zen? Yeah, you could be a little further than that though. Is it good to stop playing during a losing streak even if you're not tilted? No. As long as you are mentally capable, then... No, and honestly, I don't. I'm not even a big fan of quitting during losing streaks. You just need to get over yourself. You need to take. I would say take a break, take five minutes, collect yourself, and go back in. Like it, it should be a, a goal of yours to work on being able to perform and get over being tilted. Don't just go. Oh well, I'm tilted. That's just it. Like I'm tilted. What can I do to not be tilted? I need to practice getting over and being tilted. I mean, if you're serious about it, that's something that you want to practice. Yeah, I know, Seth. Should Brig be focused on zoning out flanker DPS? Um, not particular. Like, if it means that you have to chase them down, no, because they're just gonna play ring around the rosy with you and still threaten to kill you. You could pressure them from like if they're close by, but you don't want to go chasing them. If the Ana is easier to set up, isn't she better? Not necessarily. So like, if you're playing Ana against this comp, if you don't act quickly and kill like pressure the Zen or get a big nade, you're just eventually going to bleed out. Like. They're on a, like, I mean, how many nades or sleeps did she land? She had, she had no space. Her tanks were constantly dead. Um, yeah. Like, Ana might be easier. Ana is easier to execute into other comps that aren't dive, is my point. Like, if you're playing into Brawl, like, ex, like your tanks have to play super conservatively. They can't take damage. If they're playing into Spam, your tanks have to stage perfectly and then dive really hard. So having an Ana heal to help stage is helpful against those situations. And then Nano is pretty good, too. But in Dive versus Dive, Zen is, is like, it's as in is actually easier in Dive versus Dive. Can I set a code for a VOD review? Uh, not right now. I mean, you can if you want to in exclamation mark Discord, but I'm done for VOD reviews right now. I'm going to be doing some Al analysis instead. Could Sp Daddy Spilo do your VOD? Not if you ask like that. I mean, I, if you submit it, if you're still sub, yeah, you can submit it. I can't do it right now. Yeah.
How many hours should I get an echo before submitting a VUD? Uh, I'd probably say 10 to 15. 10 to 15 would be a good benchmark, I would say.